Okay, Victorian Liberal State MP Brad Rosewell joins us every week on Ticker to break down some of the trending topics of the nation. Brad, great to have your company as always. Yeah, likewise, Holly. Thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to start a conversation today um, by talking about the IPCC climate report that was revealed yesterday, obviously dominating our news today. Uh, what was your thought on the report and also what were your thoughts on the climate activists um, spray painting Parliament House as well today? Yeah, a couple of things, uh, Holly. I, I'm a Liberal and I love the environment. I represent a, a coastal seat. Uh, I've grown up in this area uh, and we, we need to do everything we possibly can to preserve a magnificent environment for this generation and for the next. I had the benefit of growing up in this area. I've now got a couple of kids and I want them to love this area just as much as I have and, and experience the environment just as much as I have as well. Now, the question is, what is the government's, uh, what is a government's generally around the country? What are their response to this? Now, the uh, IPCC report has said that uh, Australia per capita produces more carbon uh, than, than a lot of other nations, but we still contribute about 1.3 of global emissions with China way ahead of us in that regard. So we need to be realistic. There needs to be a global response. It'll be interesting to see uh, what comes out of Glasgow later this year. Uh, and of course, there are national governments and state governments with responsibilities as well here in Victoria as the uh, Shadow Energy Minister uh, and Shadow Minister for Renewables as well. I've got a particular interest in this area of policy. Uh, Holly, the market has decided um, the way of the future. Uh, we are moving to a decarbonised economy and decarbonised um, energy sources. We're moving towards renewables. Uh, and what is unclear here in Victoria at the moment in a concerning way uh, is that we don't have an apparent plan to get us to that renewable future where we need to be. And of course, this has community implications. This has economic implications. This has implications on potential investment decisions in the future. Uh, and of course, most importantly, um, the need for people right around our state to be able to turn their lights on, keep their air conditioners on over summer, uh, and to not be shocked uh, every three months when a massive power bill lands. So there's heaps of things that need to be considered in this mix. Uh, just on the protesters, um, I, I think they're pretty dumb, actually. Uh, you would have seen the pictures, Holly, as have I. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how a pram a light in the forecourt of our national parliament, uh, which is probably causing a bunch of emissions, actually sends a, uh, a level-headed, um, pragmatic message to our national leaders about what we should be doing in the climate change space. Uh, these protesters are not brave, as the deputy leader of the Greens has called them. They are dumb. Um, if they want to contribute in a meaningful way to policy discussions and debates in this nation, uh, they should not be destructive in their actions. They should use the established democratic process that we have in place to engage in a fulsome way. If they think that their ideas are better than the ideas being offered by our state and federal political leaders, no matter what the colour of those political leaders are, uh, then I'd encourage them to put their name on the ballot come the next state or federal election and, and let the people decide if their ideas are better than the ones currently on the table. Yeah, and just going back, um, I mean, obviously this is a strong interest for you when we talk about the climate space. Um, what do you think action-wise needs to happen at state levels, not just Victoria, but all the states? What needs to happen there uh, from both the government, but also the business in working towards climate change action? Yeah, well, I think the market has determined uh, that coal is not the future uh, for energy production. I think the market has decided that. Uh, and we can argue the toss on how the market has come to that decision, but the reality is it has. Uh, you see AGL, for example, uh, going through a company uh, separation at the moment. Effectively, they're, they're separating their company to say, uh, these are the good bits and these are the bad bits, the bad bits being uh, their current coal generation. But the risk that we have in rapidly moving towards a carbon uh, free energy production uh, is reliability and affordability of electricity. So sure, um, in an ideal world, uh, we turn off all coal generation tomorrow. Uh, and wouldn't that be great for our environment? Uh, but we wouldn't have a thriving economy. Uh, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation now because there are simply not enough renewables online and ready to go now uh, to secure energy in this state, to secure energy in this nation. 
Uh, now, at the moment, the state government is sending mixed messages in, in regards to transition fuels. So on one hand, they're saying they want to rid gas from the system. Uh, and in the next, uh, on the next hand, they're saying that they want to explore and they're actually legislating for mixing gas with other things like uh, uh, um, uh, uh, with, with other things to actually make gas a more viable solution going forward. So uh, there are mixed messages coming out of government. We, we need to be doing better. We need a stronger, firmer plan and we need to be transparent about that plan because mm. I think by and large, Holly, we're all moving in the right direction, uh, but it's just a matter of how we get there and, and in the most efficient way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, last before we wrap things up, I do want to uh, talk about this with you, Brad. Um, Melbourne is in lockdown number six. What do these lockdowns mean for businesses? Obviously, you're a voice for businesses there. Um, can you just tell us how, how are they going at the moment? Uh, you're very kind to say I'm a voice for business, Holly. I, I, I'd like to think I'm a voice for common sense. Um, look, when I visited uh, some businesses just earlier this week, um, once again, I had local traders in tears uh, talking to me about the impact that this lockdown is having on them, on their business, uh, on their family, on their employees uh, and on their customers. Because these businesses, a local cafe that I was talking to, a local cafe owner, they don't just provide people's coffee. Uh, they provide an opportunity for connection within communities. And what the Labor government in this state is doing time and time again when their first response uh, as opposed to their last resort is a lockdown, uh, is they're effectively kicking in the guts uh, businesses and the community. Um, we're going to take a long time to recover from this. This stop start must end. Uh, and as we've discussed before, Holly, um, my view is uh, the path to us opening up and opening up for good uh, is through vaccinations. I was pleased to have my second vaccination on the weekend. I'm fully vaccinated. Uh, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Anti-vaxxers come at me, I'm waiting for you. Um, this is the thing that we should be doing, that everyone in our community should be doing. Uh, and the quicker we do it, the better for everyone. Oh, good on you, Brad. Um, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to catch up with you every single week. We'll see you next week. Look forward to it, Holly. Thanks so much.